Both of them. So, all right, um, uh, whenever y'all are ready. Hi, I'm Helen Foster, and I'm super excited today to talk to Chris Burroughs, one of the owners of SES Research. And I have lots of questions for him. Um, some are questions that he and I have covered before yeah, in some yeah. videos that we did. Some are clarification on those because of so many other comments and, and, and questions that come up. Some of them are questions that came from clients over, I guess, it's, I don't even know how long it's been since we did those videos now. A year? A year and a half? I know, it seems crazy. Yeah. It seems like that was like last like month. In a blink of an eye, right? It, it does. And a lot's happened with SES Research since then, since then, and a lot's happened with a lot of my clients since then that are really great, positive stories. And so I want to welcome Chris, and thanks for having me here in yeah. his office. Well, we're at our office, but this is your show. So thank you for having me on your show. This is this is great. All right, thank you. So we're going to start with questions about um, just, I have a list here we're going to go over, but just some just general questions first. What have you been up to, and what's SES been up to since we did Yeah, the so, so since the video, a lot has been going on. I think one of the important things a lot of brands are popping up and those brands are uh, you know getting in and capitalizing on the the value that exists in the C60 market uh, what we've kind of noticed is that a lot of those brands a lot of those brands are not necessarily focused on the right thing right and so we've got brands that are that are uh, can you close that door please we've got a lot of brands that are um, we don't know where they're getting their product from, so we're the largest manufacturer and distributor of, of Carbon 60 on the planet. We call it ESS 60, and I'll explain why we do that. And so if they're not buying from us, we know that they're probably buying from overseas. There are a couple um, manufacturers in the United States that we're aware of in Canada, but they're really small. Their quantities are really small, and so um, we, we know that if they're a large manufacturer and distributor of C60 in oil or or the product in oil then and they're not buying from us then they're probably buying from overseas so that's one of our concerns obviously in the first video we did together which was so much fun um, <laughs> we we showed that one of the products that was on the market from the beginning was in fact did in fact not have C60 in it and so as part of the reason I'll jump right into this we're really kind of pushing towards calling it as it relates to C60 and oil, calling it ESS60. And what that does will demark those people who are actually purchasing the product from us, purchasing it from a domestic source, it's manufactured here, it's solvent free, all of those wonderful things. But ESS60 is kind of the nomenclature that we've come up with. And, and so you'll hear me referring kind of moving forward, um, C60 really that you would be comfortable putting in an oil, I'll call that ESS60, right? Because uh, there's lots of C60s and you can get them from lots of different places, but what you would want to put in an oil and be comfortable putting in your body is ESS60. That's what I, what I would say. That brings up the first 10 questions. Uh, the first 10? <laughs> oh, only 10. <laughs> only 10. So when you say they're buying it from other places, are we talking about China? Who else is making C60 powder? So so we have actually canvassed the landscape. It's, like, it's our industry. We've been doing this since 1991. We're the first company to deliver commercial quantities of carbon nanomaterials, including C60 and ESS60. Um, on the planet, so we're the first one that still exists. And so we've visited China, we've visited Canada, we've visited uh, parts of the United States where people are often purportedly manufacturing large quantities of, of fullerenes. And, uh, and so, so we know what we're aware of at this point, and, and actually from the beginning of the industry is there were some producers in Russia, and we haven't really talked about that before, um, we know of a Russian manufacturer slash distributor in the United States who we believe gets his product. He used to buy it from us, actually, and he had a challenge paying his bills. And oh. so we no longer sold to him, and so we're kind of aware that he probably got his product, is getting his product from Russia, or maybe he is getting it from China. And, and other than Russia, it's, it's China. China's kind of like... The, the, the place where you can get the largest quantities. Again, we've tested it. We had this incident where we had to pull C60 off of the market because we made this accident and overgrew the olive oil industry. 
and so all of our C60 was going into the olive oil and when when that happened we were looking for like is there a viable alternative so we can keep the market going and when we visited the, these other places uh, there was nothing that we would be comfortable putting in our product right which I want to clarify that meant you couldn't keep up with demand yeah, we couldn't keep up with the demand. Right, we, that's why it was unavailable. Yes, exactly. So uh, it, we've since overcome that. Actually, we're about to bring C60 prices back down. Uh, they may not go all the way back down because of con continuing manufacturing issues. It's a really expensive and challenging material to make. Um, but pricing will be coming back down. So I think that's going to be a relief for a lot of people. Yeah. Well, having said that, that brings up a question about the Chinese product, but also the cost of manufacturing, because um, there was a guy that you're aware of that called me that wanted to buy wholesale, which people should not call me. If you want to buy wholesale, you should call Chris <laughs> at SCS, because I have nothing to do with that arrangement. But um, he, when I told him, you know, basically, the, C60 is not a cheap product. It's not like I buy it for four dollars and I sell it for sixty-five or seventy-five or right. ninety. And so this this man and I don't even remember his name to say it. It doesn't matter. But he claimed that oh I can get this and for this amount of money you know four dollars a bottle and I'm a retailer and I buy all of my stuff from China. I know what the markup is. And I was like um, I think you have no idea what you're talking about because I think that if people are not I don't know even how much it costs from China, so right. I, I'm just talking like blindly here. Right. But can you talk about, I mean, there is a, a huge process and time yeah. that goes into making the product that you're making. I have no idea what it costs to get the powder from China, but can you talk about just start to finish and how long it takes to make the powder right. that goes mixed into the oil and right. how long that takes? So can you just talk about that process? because? This is not a, I don't personally think, and unless I'm wrong, it's a super inflated, like no one's making a thousand percent of right. a bottle of C60. Right. Um, so can you just talk about yeah. that? And what costs go into it? And also the labor and time, because yeah. that's a big deal. So a couple of things um, to give kind of overall perspective. So first, when we first started the company back in 1991, uh, C60 was selling for $6,000 a gram. That's a lot. That's a lot of money, right? And and it's worth repeating, six thousand dollars a gram because it was such a difficult material to make. So we've improved the processes. We've been able to bring the the the, uh, the actually cost of the product down significantly from that six thousand. And so if you kind of compare then to now, um, significant strides have been made. Uh, the other thing that's important to remember is that. When you look at the applicability of C60 in different applications, so not just this oil application that's health related, but if you look at it in solar cells, you look at it in batteries, you look at it in tires, right, and in, in ink, C60 tends to perform as well or better than the current best material on the market, right? But there's a reason C60 isn't ubiquitous, right? There's a reason GM or Goodyear isn't putting it in their tires it's expensive to make. So understand big corporations have very, very keen interest in this material and they're still not using it because it's expensive to make. So I just want like, I think that sets some of the groundwork. Mm -hmm. How do you make it? So there's really three key ways to make, uh, make fullerenes in general. So you don't just make raw C60, you make fullerenes in general. And fullerenes are, that's the, that's the gamut of molecules for which uh, Richard Smalley and his team won uh, won the Nobel Prize, and when you make it, so there's three ways. One of them is a combustion. So when you do a combustion technique, you have to do it with a, a, a you still have to have oxygen in order to have combustion, but there has to be less oxygen, so it's a really controlled process, and, and it's not used that much these days. Um, the next one is a plasma technique, so there's ways to generate large plasmas, and you can run graphite powder through those plasmas, and that will turn into fullerenes. And then the current kind of Standard technology is what's called ARC. So basically, you take two high research grade quality graphite rods, step one, expensive, <laughs> uh, and you vaporize those in an inner chamber. So you got to have a chamber, by the way, when you vaporize it, it you usually use like an arc welder. And you know that you're never supposed to look at an arc welder, right? Like parents told us, don't look at the arc welder, that's don't being welded, laser. right? <laughs> yeah, right? Don't look at the laser. Because the local temperature is the temperature of the sun. So you're looking at a process that creates the local temperature of the sun. If you don't have protection when you're doing manufacturing, you get a sunburn. 
is the local temperature of the sun. So you gotta control all this heat in this chamber. So this is a very specialized chamber, and if you wanna manufacture it at a larger scale, it's even a more specialized piece of equipment. And it has to be in an oxygen-free environment. So it's a high vacuum, high heat, expensive process just to make the soot. So great, we've made this soot. We can make lots of soot. By the way, the, the, the typical way that you would increase the production of this is you might start with a quarter inch rod and then switch to a half inch rod and then get to a one inch rod. So you're burning more material. What happens is the production of fullerenes as a percentage of the material goes down as you increase the diameter of the rods. So the obvious ways to scale this are really tough, right? They really, it, 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 it just doesn't work. Now we've got our soot, we've burned this off, and we've got this. And you might think, great, we have fullerenes. Well, there's some fullerenes in there. You usually end up with about an eight to 10% fullerenes. So you got more than 90% of what you just produced is carbon junk. And you have to get rid of carbon junk, right? So think about like 90% of our production process, we just throw away. And carbon junk is just junk. It doesn't have any value. value. It, it doesn't have. It may have value in other industries, but, but it's if not, it was mixed with oil, it would right? Have you no would benefit. not. You. I would not consume it, right? Okay. Like, and, and I would not consume it for a couple reasons. It's got. It would have some of all of the fullerenes. So the fullerenes are C60, the most abundant. C70, C76, C86, um, on, on up. And and so those haven't been tested. I wouldn't put C70 in my body. Let me just. I think that's worth repeating because of things that are happening in this industry. I would not put C70 in oil or in otherwise in my body because I just there's no research on it. They assumed C60 was toxic. That's why they did the toxicity study. So the current assumption I operate on is that C70 is toxic. Don't have any data either way, but make assumptions before you put things in your body, right? right? So you get this material, 10% of that material is full of rings. Now you gotta separate it from the carbon junk, right? So imagine you had sugar and sand and you wanted to separate sugar and sand. In this case, the sugar is the full rings and the sand is the carbon junk. So you do need to take a, a solvent, an organic solvent, like a toluene or a hexane, something that you don't want to put in your body, and fullerenes will dissolve, just like sugar will dissolve in water, fullerenes will dissolve in this solvent. Okay. And then you filter it, and just like sugar and water, when you filter it, the, excuse me, sand, sugar, and water, the sugar will go through in solution, it goes through in the water, and the sand gets stuck on top of the filter. The same thing happens here. We've got our fullerene rich soot and we soak it in toluene. We filter it, now all the carbon crap, then again, 90% of what we just made is junk, is stuck on top of the filter, and what goes through is fullerenes in solution. It's not, we're still not at carbon 60 yet. <laughs> we're at carbon 60, carbon 70, 84 on up. And so now we've got this material. If you wanted to just sell that material, and it's actually SES Research, it does, it's, we created the name from soot extract in 60. Extract is the product that we're talking about oh. that went through in solution, right? I didn't know that's where your name came from. Yeah, and, and it's not like, it's not legal, we don't use it anywhere, but that's where we came up with the, with the letters. Um, so now you've got this material, it's usually about 80% C60, and then close to 30% C70, and a little smidge of the higher full rings. But now if we want pure C60, you're not putting C70 in my body, I want pure C60. So now you have to go through a chromatography process. Again, in solutions, potentially you want to take it out of toluene, you want to put it into ODB, other chemicals that are not safe, that you do not want to consume. You run it through what's called a column, and that column will uh, allow the C60 to go through faster and will slow down the C70, so you collect the fractions that come off of that, and now that's in a dangerous solution. You you boil that solution off, you get your powder, and now you can have pure C60. And that's the C60 that we sell on our website, but you want to get ESS60 because that's gone through that last process. Now, how long did that process take? Well, so we can do that process. I mean, it just depends. So we do it in larger batches or we'll do it in smaller batches, but that's gonna, that's gonna be, it, it, you know, I haven't really thought of it in those terms. From the time of actual production until we're done through the column, we're probably talking about three weeks, right? Okay. So it's, a, it's those columns are a long process. Now, we have a, the systems ongoing, right? So what we put in three weeks ago is now coming out. 
and so it's a continuous process so that we can manufacture and keep up with demand. But, but yeah, it's a long process. Everything about this process is chemically intensive and, and is challenging and therefore expensive. Right, and then, so just to get the C60 powder is, is three weeks, let's say three weeks, and then you gotta mix it with the oil. How long does that take? So two weeks is the minimum that you're gonna mix the oil. We actually end up mixing our oil more to ensure total saturation. And that's a, that's a new change since the last time we even spoke. We were looking at our saturation levels and we weren't happy with how close to full saturation we were getting, so we extended our, 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 our mixing time. So how long is that now? We're doing that for three weeks now. So from start to finish, you get one bottle Yeah. <laughs> yep. six weeks. If we were to just say like, hey, let's make one bottle, yeah, six weeks and you could have your one bottle. But you can't do it in, there's no way to do this in two days. No. That's impossible. No. Yeah, no. okay. That's not happening. So that's what I wanted to, to confirm. Now what would happen if someone kind of shortcutted, because I know when C60 powder was out, and you weren't able to provide it to other people. Yeah. You and I have talked about this. You can say whatever you want to say about it. But if you couldn't provide C60 powder to people selling C60 oil, like right. coconut oil, avocado oil, then they can't get it. So right. they either had to buy it somewhere else, which would be, in my mind, an inferior product. Yeah. Or what's the other option? They couldn't have made it quickly. So, so here's what it, So we were in a situation where we know we're the largest manufacturer distributor on the planet. And there's part of us like, well, well, we could play crafty monopoly businessmen with this, and we didn't like we're not, we don't want to manipulate that situation, but we had this sense that that's where we were in the market, and then we took it off the market, and two things happened that we weren't expecting. So one of them is how many people went to China like really quickly, and so people who were no longer purchasing from us were still having their fresh product on the market but they weren't purchasing from us. And so we had canvassed the landscape, so we understand where well, you really got like two small producers in North America, um, potentially Russia, and then you know a Chinese supplier. And I don't know if you know this, but there's a, there's a very dark history of, of, of Chinese products coming out of China and doing damage to people. Right? Oh, I know, in the natural health field, I don't have a single product I mean, let's talk about dog treats. Right. I mean, killing dogs, but in my office, I don't sell any products from China, and none. They're sourced in Boulder or, you know, like Hannah Kroger's products. There's no part of that that comes from China. And I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't take a C60 product with, a, I don't know what would be in the solvents, that's another question, but I wouldn't put that in my body. Yeah. Because of the toxicity or whatever else. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. On. In fact, so one of the things that we did when we decided, okay, now this supplement market that we never chose is actually happening, right? And so it's landed in our lap, and more and more people are calling for doses, which, as carbon nanomaterial scientists, made us very uncomfortable. You know, the first phone call we got, probably in about 2013, the study came out in 2012, where someone was like, hey, how much in a dose? made us so nervous that we actually added not for human consumption to our packaging. Just because, I mean, the literature was pretty clear that it was safe. We just, we, our mindset was, you know, it goes in tires, it goes in paints, it goes in uh, battery cells, it goes in solar cells. So our mindset was like, no, 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 don't put this in your body. And it took us, it took us a while to get, to get there. When you look at the literature, there is some literature that shows C60 to be damaging. When you look at the literature correctly, you'll notice that there's two instances where C60 is damaging. The first one is where the solvents weren't taken care of properly, okay. right? So if you're putting hexane or toluene or whatever uh, the organic solvent is in your body, there's no surprise. There are known carcinogens. There are known to known have known toxicities. And the other is is what C60 is not water soluble. That's why it's dissolved in oil. And when you, you can make C60 water soluble by adding chemical compounds to the exterior of it, and when you, it's called hydrolyzing it, when you hydrolyze it, it also shows damaging effects in the body. So you don't want to take a water soluble C60. They may eventually come up with a water soluble C60 that the literature shows is not is safe, but currently when you read articles about C60 that say, ah, you probably shouldn't take it, one of those two things is true. And that makes it, that's like the problem, I think, the, the good and the bad of the internet and YouTube is that 
there's so much out there that isn't clear that that's that comes up with the questions a lot about the solvents and the toxicity because someone will read that one article and it's not specific or yeah. they heard it from some guy on YouTube that has no idea what he's talking about and then it makes you afraid to put it in your body yeah. because you don't know where it's sourced, you don't know where it came from, you don't know where they got the C60 powder. And the more research you do, honestly, it, the more confusing it becomes. Yeah, it can. I sure. think. Yeah. So let's talk about the toxicity and the, it, how do you say it, toluene? Toluene. Toluene. Is, is a component of gasoline. Okay. So I don't, <laughs> I've never heard that word before C60. So yeah. let's talk about that and how you're using it and how it's extracted safely. Right. So, so toluene is one of those components that's an organic solvent that fullerenes will dissolve in and the rest of the carbon junk that's manufactured in that fullerene soap making process won't dissolve in. You filter it and it comes through. So, so toluene is a known toxic solvent. It's a known carcinogen. You, you know, we handle it safely in our lab. So we have processes and procedures to handle it safely in our lab. I would never put toluene in my body, right? And so the thing is, and, and we kind of talk about this process where, great, we've got this solution, we've run it through the column, and we've got this fraction that's pure C60. And when we have that fraction, we boil off the solvent and now we've got a powder and that's what we'll sell on our website as C60. And then we take it through two final steps in order to make it so that we'll sell it for uh, oil manufacturers to put it in there. And we call that ESS60. So you wanna look for ESS60 to know that it's been properly cleaned and the solvents are doing. And, and really that is a process. You take a, an ultra high vacuum oven and you bake it under vacuum pressure, right? So so what you know there's a pvrt equation pressure volume temperature so by drawing out the by putting it in a low ultra low vacuum and by heating it you're really reducing the boiling point very very low so we all know like oil water boils a lot faster in you know in the mountains right so a one minute soup or whatever takes longer because it's actually a lower, it's really a lower temperature. So what that does is it makes the toluene come off faster and also by pulling that vacuum on it, the toluene vapors have a place to go, right? So that's, that's that process. And then we do a final kind of proprietary washing process that makes sure that we get as much of the toluene as, as possible. Are there parts per billion of toluene in the powder when we're done? There probably are parts per billion. We had it tested by the EPA and we're, I think the last calculation I did, once you get it into the oil, we're about 100,000 times lower than the EPA safety rating for toluene in water. Okay, I'm glad you said that because that's one question that did come up from a client that's very technical and very research-minded. Yeah. Is, well, how do you know? Yeah. How do you know that it's... All baked off. All baked off, and how do you know how much is left, and how do you know how much you're actually consuming? Right. So how often do you guys do those kinds of So tests? It's, it's part of our batch process. So when we're making a large batch of you know, 10 kilos of C60, we're going to take that batch and we're going to run a test on it uh, after we bake it off. So after we turn it from regular C60 into ESS60. So every batch is tested? Every batch is tested. Okay, yeah. I'm glad you said that. Okay, and then I know you can't speak probably for every company in the world that might make the C60 powder, but can you just speak about, I just have a feeling about China that makes me nervous, but do you know what their process is for taking the solvents out, if there is a process, or do you know anything about so how that compares? I, I just don't know, right? I, okay. I don't know what their process is. Look, I know that when we were trying to find out some solution for the industry, uh, we looked at different products, and even though it represented a reduction in our sales, we opted not to engage in, in with those companies and, and move their product because it just didn't meet our standard. Okay. Right. So, so you've we, never taken their product and put it through your testing for... Well, we did reading. take it and put it through our test, testing, and we just weren't comfortable with the product in general. Okay. Right. So, so yeah, that's that's... I can't speak to what their processes are, you know, some of the things that we were looking for when we're looking at materials. And this is this is getting very, very, um, very scientific and very exact, because we're very exact in what we sell, um, is a, a, we were looking for oxid oxides, right? So C60, when it's produced in, a, in an environment with a lot of pollution, ox, uh, ozone will actually create oxides. So you end up with C60 oxides. 
just like C70, I would not put C60 oxides in my body because I we just don't know. They, they may be safe, they may not be safe. I'm not putting it in my body. So we wanted to make sure that those oxides weren't. Uh, that was one of kind of the deciding factors. Well, see, I'm glad I know you yeah. <laughs> know that this is the product I'm taking because the more I know, the less I want to deal with a product that I don't know the owner, yeah. I don't know the standards, I don't know the lab. I mean, I'm fortunate you guys are in Houston, yeah. and I now know you personally. And so are we. Like, this is great. I'm glad, but I can't imagine buying the cheap and whatever C60, I don't even know the name of it. Yeah. I don't want to buy the cheapest C60 on the market because that makes me cringe. It, it makes, makes me, me nervous. It makes me nervous, it yeah. does. And I'm not saying that because of trying to say anything bad about another product. Right. I'm saying that there's too many Variables, variables here that I want to have some control over what I put in my body and I feel that way about why I buy organic why I take the products I take anyway right. because I know they're quality products I don't want to buy the cheapest thing I don't want to go buy fish oil at Costco not knocking Costco but that's not where I want to buy my yeah. fish oil when a thousand of them are nine dollars right you know that's just not what I want to put in my body because right. I know they haven't been tested for contaminants at the same at the same level yeah. right at the same level okay so the next question and this is another technical question but you and I did a short video a second video yeah that showed the extract of well first of all the filtering the filtering of, yeah. and a lot of comments and questions came up about that let's let's tackle the black carbon product first and we might as well just talk about shungite in the same category. Right. Um, so can but a lot of people comment to me, oh, I take shungite, or I put shungite in water, and that's how I get my C60. Now, no. no. Well, I, I know. <laughs> I respond that that's not right, but somehow that became a thing. A thing, yep. and I don't know how it became a thing because I don't know who technically said that and thought that that was correct. So can you talk about why charcoal? or car carbon black oil, right. or shungite, which to me are all the same thing. Right. Why that's not C60, and why that would have no benefit except for, I don't even know if it would have any benefit except maybe the oil it's in. Well, so I, I can speak to a couple things. So one, we pulled a product off of the web. I think it's, I can't remember the name of the product. I've got a video of it that shows that it doesn't have C60 in it. And, and it says, you know, potentialized C60 in it. First off, I don't even know what that means, but the implication is there's C60 in it, and there's no C60 in it. You dissolve it in toluene, which is what you do, and in toluene, C60 turns purple. Fact, like that's just what happens to it. Um, and they refer to that as carbon 60, I think. Yeah, well, yeah, well, the, the, the pro that product is like, it's activated charcoal, which we know can be good for you, right? Activated charcoal is actually very good at absorbing, um, uh, yeah, toxins, right? And, and some of the stuff that is actually good at absorbing is uh, is the organic solvents, right? So if you want, if you had a pile of, you know, a puddle of toluene here, and you had a can of activated charcoal, that'd be a very good way to clean up that mess. I mean, it would leave a bigger black mess, but in terms of safety, that activated charcoal is going to absorb uh, those organic solvents. So um, I think the way that people started to assume that there was C60 in uh, in shungite is all of the health benefits that people are, are showing and, and reporting related to C60. And people have for ages said that shungite is healthy and good for you. And then they're like, well, there must be C60 in shungite. The reality is there isn't. So uh, the, the research group, Dr. Richard Smalley at Rice University here in town, um, I'm still in contact with some of his, uh, his graduate students, and they on three separate occasions took shunkite from around the world and looked at it to, like there's no, like I'm, I, I'm as talented as them, and I can understand why people wouldn't, don't assume, because I have a vested interest. These are the grad students of the guy who discovered the material, and they're running the tests on Shanghai on three separate occasions. It's either in the parts per billion or no C60 at all. So the only thing that we can say with confidence is you are not getting any C60 in your body if you're taking Shanghai. And, and the other thing is, is you can actually take real C60 powder, and we'll call it ESS60 because now we're about to put it in our body, only put ESS60 in your body. If you put ESS60 in your body, in its crystalline form, the surface area is so reduced that most of it's just gonna pass through your body, right? So the concept of just taking a cap of C60, a gel cap or whatever with C60 in it, 
is would be a total waste of, and an incredibly expensive waste of money. What happens when you dissolve it in oils and all the oils that will, that that were that we currently work we're actually about to come out with other oils because the the market keeps clamoring for it and we're going to tell you that olive oil is the only one that has research on it. The other oils are you know if you're going to try it you might as well try it from the right company, right? Right. Um, so when you dissolve it in those oils, you're actually getting down to single molecules of C60 floating around in this oil. I don't know if I showed with you, I did some calculations. I think there's about 430 or 470 times in one drop of this oil, there's 470 times more molecules of C60, or specifically ESS60, than there are cells in your body. Wow. That's just how small it is. because it's an atom and the cells in your body are made up of tons of atoms, right? Right. right? So each cell is, you, know, you have this volume, but one drop has 400 plus uh, times the amount of cells that you have, uh, of molecules of C60 as you have the cells in your body. Again, ESS60, because I think it's a really important demarcation. C60, you can buy in China, you can buy there, and if you're doing research on solar cells, great, use it. If you're doing research on tires, great, use it. If you're gonna put it in your body, uh, ESS 60 is what you really want to have. Okay. Well, okay. Let's talk about the other oils. That's a good lead way into yeah. that question. Okay. So in that same video yep. where we strained the black carbon and there was out nothing. of the sunflower seed oil. <laughs> the yes. Sunflower seed oil. That video is on my YouTube channel if you want to go back and watch yeah, go, the live demonstration. Out. But then you know you and I have talked about this before, but this question continues to come up. Now some people don't love. I mean, I don't know why I'm a blood type. You guys know if you watch my channel, I'm a blood type person. Olive oil is the only oil that's good for all four blood types, period. Coconut oil is not. Avocado oil is not. Al avocados are not good for O's and B's. Coconut's not good for any blood type except A, B's, I think. Maybe A's, I can't remember. But olive oil is universally good. What some people tell me is that they don't like that bite. There's a, a certain peppery yep. bite. Now, it doesn't bother me at all, but maybe I'm used to it. But some people seem to be very sensitive to that yeah. bite, which I think is not a big deal. Maybe it's different people's taste buds is more sensitive. I'm not sure. Some people call it spicy. I don't think it's spicy. And then they want to go to a milder oil, right. like coconut or avocado. That's what I hear. So I know personally, because I've been to places where you taste olive oils, and it seems like the better the quality of olive oil and the less cut it is with palm oil or other oils, it has that, that spice to it. Right. It has that, what people call a bite. And I know there's cheaper oils. Yep. I know that there's inferior oils that don't have that, but you wanna, first let's talk about that. Yeah. About which oil you're using. I know it's organic, but you wanna talk about the oil you use in the vital C. So, so we're actually making a shift. And so to be very specific, that bite is caused by the earlier you harvest the olives in their season, has a significant impact because it's also it also has a kind of grassy flavor, mm -hmm. right? And if you've kind of gone to a, an olive oil place where they sell all these fancy olive oils, it's the, the earlier in the season that you harvest the olives is the more kind of peppery taste. So you can get a mild, milder olive oil, and that's what we've done. We've actually gone out and said, let's find a milder olive oil because people are complaining about this. If we're going to go out with a, a more retail version, we're going to get a milder olive oil still organic, still cold pressed, it's just developed, you know, uh, uh, harvested later in the season so you don't end up with that aftertaste, okay. right? But those are really important things to us to, to make sure that you've got the olive oil because the industry is, uh, you know, there's a, I, I guess as soon as the industry is mature enough to have fraud, Netflix does a video on it, right? So there's a Netflix documentary on olive oil and, and the challenges that the olive oil industry has with palm oil. Interestingly, a lot of people sell MCT oil, right? Mm -hmm. And some people will say it's MCT coconut oil, but MCT coconut oil is actually quite expensive. Mm -hmm. Most MCT oil is actually harvested out of palm, mm -hmm. right? So you still have those, those challenges. So uh, getting the right olive oil, and the reason we stuck with olive oil for so long is because of our, our background of being focused on what is the real research and you know what was it done on and what do we know about and what we do know is that olive oil is good for you it's part of the mediterranean diet it's one of the things that people say oh mediterranean diet one of those components is olive oil um and that's what the original research was on right so interestingly 
olive oil has a longevity experiment that no other oil has. In that original Bati study in 2012, one group of rats was given water, one group of rats was given olive oil, and the other group of rats was given olive oil with ESA 60, right? The ones that were given olive oil actually lived 30% longer than the control group, right? That's, a, that's actually, if there was not an ESS 60 experiment in that one, that's the longest experiment on mammals known to man. Now it's eclipsed with the 90% life extension of the, the, the rats that were given ESS 60 in olive oil. So olive oil is kind of the core and we stuck with that really as long as we can. And as we're trying to get spread the word and make this available to people, you're right, some people don't like that aftertaste. And so we'll be coming out with MCT oil, we'll be coming out with just all the oils, right? So there's lots of companies that have the oils. If you want to buy it, buy it from a reputable source. That's what we're, what we're saying. Yeah, I agree. And, and that's the thing is that in natural health, the, the same problem exists. You can get, you know, most aloe juice you buy at the health food store is not pure aloe juice. I use the Kroger brand. Um, again, a gallon of organic extra virgin cold pressed olive oil cannot be $10. You know, that's, that's, that means it's cut with something. That's not pure extra virgin organic olive oil. It doesn't work that way. So it's almost a, a too good to be true. Yeah. You know, if you can buy a gallon of something, <laughs> it's under $10 and it's supposedly made in Italy and, and it, whatever, you know, there's yeah. just like a lot of problems with that. But, um, okay, so back to the purple thing. Okay, yeah. so um, one of my questions is when we did the extraction on the oils, there, the toluene is purple, right? It, no, but toluene no. is a clear liquid. Okay, it's a clear liquid, and it turns purple. When you add C60 to it. Okay, so when you add C60 to it. So why is, I know you answered this in another video, yeah, but this yeah. question keeps coming up. Why is the olive oil the only oil that's not purple with the C60 powder in it? Because it actually is. So in reality, it is purple. And I think you've seen this. I know on one of the containers that we use, there's a really thin plastic tip where the oil comes out of. And when you look at that tip, it has a purple hue, hue to it. The, 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 the issue with olive oil is olive oil has a greenish hue. Mm -hmm. What happens when you put purple and green together? You get a reddish color. Yeah, right? it's amber. It's an amber color. Uh -huh. That's the reason. C60 in olive oil is turning purple. If olive oil didn't have a green hue to it inherently, okay. it would be a purple solution, okay. right? So sunflower seed oil is a clearer oil that doesn't have a green hue to it, it turns purple. MCT oil, same thing, it turns purple. And then avocado oil, I haven't played much with avocado oil. I think it turns purple too. Yeah. It's more purple because the avocado oil, it, it, it's not clear though, yeah. like to start with. So, okay, that answers that. Then let's go to the um, the other oils. Now, I when I was at your office one time, yeah, I saw a study right that showed the saturation of the different oils, the different oils, the different oils. I don't remember who did that study, yeah. but that was another thing that besides all the other things we've already talked about, that kind of had me still sold yeah. on olive oil. So, can you talk about? I don't know who saturation did the study or saturation, yeah. but can you talk about that because? I think that's another factor. If it's one oil has much. a different saturation than another, why would you buy the one with less saturation? Yeah, so, so probably the big outlier is MCT oil, right? So MCT oil has about 60% of the saturation capability as, as olive oil. So typically we say it's about 0.8 milligrams per milliliter for olive oil. If you do 60% of that, you're, you're above 0.4, so you're at about 0.45 milligrams per milliliter of MCT oil. So if you're taking MCT oil, you need to take more oil. Most of the vendors out there, that information may be on their website, but they're, we, we, we don't feel like they're making it clear the dosage on an MCT oil should be almost double. Okay. Right? And so if, you're, if your target is C60, that should be your target. If you're going under the hypothesis that, that, um, that you're gonna recreate the exact same experiment, the results in that original study with MCT oil versus olive oil, if you go down that path, then you should still be taking more MCT oil than olive oil. Again, there's no research on MCT oil that shows MCT oil and C60 has any extension of life. That study hasn't been done. Okay, well, another question, because this has to do, I think, with maybe saturation, maybe, different C60, maybe no C60. Right. When I did the, the 
uh, Bitcoin Ben Crypto Conference in Blanco right. earlier this year. I had people come up to me, they knew about us because of YouTube or they knew about SES Research right. already. And a number of people came up to me and said, oh, I tried C60, I didn't notice anything. <laughs> and I was like, okay, no one that I know has said that. Like, I have clients that have even tried it, felt great, stopped it, didn't feel great, tried again. I have people that are so funny that they'll tell me how great they feel, and then three months later, they'll say, oh, I stopped taking it <clears throat> because I was suspicious. Like, how can I feel that good? So they stopped taking it because, because they, they feel felt so good. So good. Well, <clears throat> and then it. they are like, that's okay, hard... I, it's like crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Then they start taking it again. And then they they're like, they feel good again. And then these people came up and they weren't using your C60. Right. They were getting it from online or other right. places. Some of them, I know the name Cheap and Something. Yeah. That was one brand that came up over and over. By the way, they used to buy from us. They no longer buy their product from us. One of the things is they were buying the wrong product with solvents in it, oh. right? So they weren't buying ESS60, they were just buying C60. And and we kind of had a conversation with them because we knew where the oil was going, where, oh. where the product was going. And then there was a shift and the price is still the same and they're not buying from us. And so um, if you're buying ESS60, you probably, well, you can't sell it at that price. Okay, well, and that makes sense because it. it's a lot cheaper, Yeah. but they were also seeing no benefits. So this is like the problem because then they tell me, oh, I tried that and I didn't notice anything. And I'm like, you didn't try this product Yeah. and you didn't take it as just. And the funny thing is I'll tell people, you know, um, the directions are, you know, variable, uh, yeah. but I tell people if it's a dropper, yep. the dropper, you know, and then yep. the, the, the spoon and they're like, oh, I was taking two, I have a friend who wasn't taking consistently and she thought two dropperfuls meant two drops. Oh, yeah, So yeah. she was like taking two drops and I'm like, no, it's two dropperfuls, you know? So if someone's not seeing results, I mean, I'm not I'm not 100% sure that everyone in the world would see results. Yeah, they, like, but, there's different bodies, different chemistries, right, different, yeah. Right, but have you, I mean, do you think it's just that the product isn't really C60 since they weren't taking years? Do you have any idea why they would have that experience? So I think, you know, we, 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 it kind of goes into kind of current theories about why, what is C60 doing? Why is it adding value to people, right? And again, ESS60 because we're putting it in our body. And what we know about ESS60 in olive oil is that it's a great antioxidant. Some have reported 172 times more powerful than vitamin C and it's a great anti-inflammatory. One of the consistent, and we've talked about this, one of the consistent things we hear is better sleep, mm -hmm. right? And when you get, and I think you're, well, it's funny, you're like, people say they're not showing anything and you never hear that, but you one time, at one point said, I don't, I didn't notice anything, right? It was, mm -hmm. you kind of had to slow down and take stock and like, oh wait, these things are different. When did those things start happening? And you're good because you keep track of those things. You know, okay, that was ultimately, I can give you a couple of, uh, of examples. By the way, we're talking a little bit about benefits. So it is important to say the FDA has not evaluated the product. It's not intended to treat, diagnose, or cure, or prevent any disease. And so I, I, they're, they're in, we're actually in a co-working space here. And there's a, a lady here who's going through, is um, you know going to some oncology processes, right? So she's got cancer and she's going through some treatments. And she was talking to me, I'm like, hey, try, I just gave her the product. Like, I'm here, how can I help? I gave her some product. About 15 days afterwards, uh, I, I bumped into her and I'm like, so have you noticed anything? She, of course, said, no, I haven't, I haven't really noticed anything. And then I said, well, so how are you sleeping? And her eyes lit up and she goes, well, now that you mention it, I've been posting on Facebook <laughs> that I've been waking up at 5.30 every day and without the alarm clock, but I'm rested. I'm not just like up and darn it, I'm awake and that's ruined my day. I feel good by 5.30 in the morning. And that's the thing that we get regularly, right? I've got a guy who came into our office and I, I think I've told you this story. Uh, he had been to the office before, he was making his third purchase, it was his third bottle, and I walked up there and I said, well, what, what are you experiencing? And he said, well, nothing. And so, so there is some logic to this, right? The, the, the study doubled the life of rats and those rats didn't have any tumors, whereas all the control rats lived 32 months and died with tumors. The ones given ESS 60 and olive oil lived 62 months and had no tumors. Really important piece. So if you're looking to extend your life, there is no literature that supports that 
better than this product. There's just nothing out there. There's no research. There's nothing. The best you can do is 10 to 15% if you starve yourself half to death and who really wants to live that way, right? Mm -hmm. So if he was just taking the product to kind of take some insurance against tumors and have some insurance to try and live longer and wasn't getting any immediate benefits, there's logic there. Like that still makes sense. But there is still this awkward pause because most of our customers say that they're getting something in it. And after this little awkward pause, he kind of gestured towards his knuckles. He's like, well, does it help with arthritis? And I was like, well, the FDA hasn't evaluated it, but we are getting lots of reports of helping with our rheumatoid arthritis. And he goes, well, then it fixed that. <laughs> and I used to have a click in my knee and that's gone away. I'm like, okay, well, that's good. And he goes, and I'm jogging now. I haven't jogged for like five years and I'm about to go for my eighth job or whatever it was. So, but he didn't notice anything. But nothing's happened. And then he goes, but one more thing. He goes, I have less stress at work. And he was like, let me be clear. It's the same job, it's the same people, it's the same stress. I just feel less stressed at work. And I'm like, well, too bad you're not experiencing anything. Enjoy your three new bottles. <laughs> and we get that all the time. Right? I know it cracks me up. I have, I, I'll tell, I'll share a few stories and I'll tell you my update. And my update is, is pretty significant because people that have known me literally my whole life, but especially for at least 15 years, right. I have, I mean, my, my stuff is, you know, well documented on YouTube, but what I noticed this year, and even it started last year, you know, I was saying I needed less sleep, I was waking up earlier, but it is 100% that my, not biological clock, but right. my time clock, I, I was a night person my whole life. When I was younger, I had- Circadian rhythm. Circadian there rhythm right. has yeah. completely changed, and I can't give anything else credit for that. But in a good way. So, you know, when I was um, younger, I worked three jobs, usually had a waitress job and two other jobs. I was always up till 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. I, I've always been that way in my whole life. And unless I was exhausted, never in bed before 11.30, ever. Right, right. Never up <laughs> <laughs> before 7 or 8 a.m. I mean, I had to be taking a flight to go on vacation. And you so, could make it, and knowing it's not a problem, they just were no preference at all. Right. right. And I didn't use an alarm clock because I've always been self-employed, but if I wanted to get up early and had to do it a few days in a row for some reason, it, I actually would feel nauseous. It hurts. <laughs> it, hurt. it would be like a hangover, but it would be like nauseous and, and not thinking so clearly. And also, I was always a person that my brain worked best after 10 a.m. Right. I didn't feel bad. I just was a little foggy. Yeah. It, that is totally gone. Not gone. That is not. It hasn't been like that in a year. And I've been on C60 now a year and ten months. So at least for a year, I'm up now between 5:50 and 6:15. Wake up, no alarm clock. I am done sleeping, and I am up. My brain is instantly on. I'm on emails usually by 6:30. Um, I've already walked my dogs, had breakfast, fed my dogs done emails and sometimes I'm on, the, I'm on the elliptical all before eight o'clock. <laughs> this is what time I used to get up and start all these things. So I used to schedule my clients starting at 10 and with traffic in Houston, that made sense anyway. Now I'm like, okay, it's eight o'clock. Now what? I got, I, I, what do I do? For <laughs> no, what do I do now? Because in, in my, my assistant comes in at eight 30. And so it's like, I'm like, when she's getting there, I'm like waiting on her. I'm like, <laughs> That's okay, maybe you should come in earlier. But it is totally weird. I mean, it's weird when you say, I'm 56. In your whole life, you've never been a morning person. And I am done. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to have my stuff happening. But the other thing that's weird is that by about 10 o'clock, I still go to sleep about 10, 10, 30. But when I go to sleep at 10 or 10, 30, I am tired, like normal tired, and I sleep well. Yeah. And then I wake up, and I feel like I slept. I yeah. feel like I and refreshed and on the mornings I have to get up really early like 4:30, um, or some for some reason a few days in a row I, I feel fine still yeah you know because then I am setting an alarm just because I don't normally get up at 4:30, but I'm, I'm not feeling sick to my stomach I'm not feeling nauseous I'm feeling you know fine I want to ask you a question and I wonder if anyone's asked you this this is totally in woo-woo land okay but I have had some clients including as of this morning that have actually said that they've had an Kind of a spiritual experience okay. with C60 or vital, specifically this product. Right, right. Um, 
So, have you had anyone tell you that? I haven't had. So, okay. so I'm interested. Tell me more um, about this. It's, the first person that told me this was a person, I actually mailed it to someone in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And she took it, and her email to me said, holy shit, what's in this? <laughs> she felt immediately better, different, but she said she felt like she was kind of having this total uh, spiritual experience, almost like levitating. Right, right. Like, hi, so but not, like, yeah, yeah like, and she, she loves it. I mean, yeah. she was just, like, really um, excited about it. But just this morning, I had a person in the, in the medical field, and so coming from him, it was especially uh, interesting because it is affecting, you know, meditation and dream interpretation. Right. And he said, I'm having a total spiritual experience. And I wonder if that's because the energy is so good that you can do that. I know it's off topic, but I didn't know if anyone had told you that. I've had maybe about 10 people tell Talk me that. that either their meditation was better they felt more connected. They felt more intuitive. Centered, maybe. Centered. Yeah. I, I, I didn't, so, so I don't know. I, I would say that, that there are a couple of cases. So one of yours, like when you were really taking stock, and I'll, I'll always remember the story, one of the things, as weird as it may sound, was your closet was clean, mm -hmm. right? And that was just something that hadn't been cleaned for a long time. But we also know kind of deep-rooted that not cleaning closet is an emotional, usually is a little bit of emotional baggage, right? And so when you finally get the closet clean, there's some more emotional release there. So mm -hmm. that doesn't surprise me at all that you're that you're talking about this. And I remember, and I wish I could remember the instant somebody told me they cleaned out their garage or or they used oh, to be I've a had lots or of people tell me this. I don't remember what it was, but but I responded to the person next to me going, it's like it's like ESS60 is a therapy. Drug, right? Therapy in a bottle, right? Um, <laughs> and and so what I'm so my current theory, people are always I, I'm on podcasts and getting on podcasts, and people are always asking, so what's going on here? Well, we know antioxidant, we know anti-inflammatory, and we know good sleep. There's a book called Why We Sleep, and I, if you want to be totally scared, you should read this book because what it does is if you're not get it talks about the scientific studies for people who aren't getting, and they call it six, at least six to seven hours of sleep opportunity per night. If you're not getting at least that, what damage does it do? What's the increase in heart disease? What's the increase in diabetes? What's the increase of memory loss? You know, forgetting the, the, the you know, the, in, the, in these research studies are like, hey, remember these numbers or remember these animals or colors or whatever, and how likely you are, less likely you are to remember them if you don't get the right amount of sleep mm -hmm. that night and actually that week. <laughs> and so it's a very scary book from the perspective of if you're not the kind of person who doesn't get enough sleep, if you are the kind of person who doesn't get enough sleep, like this is doing damage, right? It also talks about the two billion dollar industry that is sleep aids, right? And oh, you huge. and I know sleep aids huge. are not sleep huge. aids. No. They are knock you out unconscious aids, or not even aids. So the question is, if I hit you in the head with a hammer hard enough for you to be unconscious, would you wake up and say, wow, I had a nice night's sleep? Well, you don't have the pain of the headache, but what's, what's not happening when you're asleep on these drugs is you're not getting your REM sleep, you're not getting your in-REM sleep, and the, the book Why We Sleep talks about what happens when you don't get REM sleep and you don't get in-REM sleep. So everyone reports good sleep. I'm actually reached out to the author of that book and I'm trying to see what we can do to kind of show that C60, ESS60, because we're putting it in our body, adds value to, uh, to sleep. And so if it's adding value to sleep, and if not getting sleep has all these detrimental effects, mm -hmm. then everything that we talk about, better uh, or, you know, reduction of arthritis, also anti-inflammatory, but those types of things can be benefited by better sleep. And so maybe there's this antioxidant process that you go through in your first stages of sleep that take up, or maybe lots of stages, that take up a lot of time and energy and because C60 is in there, ESS60 is in there kind of cleaning out your body, um, it doesn't have to go through those processes, so you get right to other valuable sleep. Oh, I think, I think there's probably at least half of the health conditions out there that could be benefited from sleep. Yes. I, I mean, yeah. joint issues, cardiovascular disease, I mean, they've already shown the link between sleep apnea and cardiovascular disease, right. so that's huge. Um, I was also going to say that, you know, with um, 
taking C60, I think that the, the sleep is one thing because that would explain the energy the next day. Yeah. You have the energy to clean the garage, clean the closets. You know, that's probably the biggest thing I'll, I'll suggest to people if you haven't tried C60 before, and there'll be a link under this video to where you can buy C60 direct or how to contact me if you want to, to get it from me. But the thing I want to say about it is, because this is so common when people say, I didn't notice anything. I hear this all the time. Yeah. And then, um, and then I always say, well, you know, so the person will say, well, they couldn't get their butt off the couch to exercise. Oh, no, now they're exercising, now they're running, now they're back at the gym, now they're playing soccer. Okay, well, that's new. Um, they didn't have the energy to even do their job. They were wanting to take a nap in the afternoons. They couldn't make it really past lunchtime. Okay, that's gone. Um, they're, you know, when people are cleaning out closets and the garage and the stuff that's been sitting the way it's been sitting for a few years, that's abnormal, especially when it's seven, eight, nine o'clock at night, when that used to be TV time, because there's no way you're gonna go yeah, tackle the, the yeah, garage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, maybe a weekend, and you, yeah. you, you psych yourself I up, you're gonna spend the whole I weekend. Used to nap, I used to nap two times before noon on Saturday. So I would wake up a little early, go downstairs, my kids were watching TV, so I'd lay down on the couch with them, spend some kid time. <laughs> taking a nap, and then I would wake up and eat breakfast, and then I would go back and I would have two naps. I don't take naps, I rarely take naps now. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's just attributed to the, I think, the better sleep that I get at night and the, the more energy that I have. It's really important to talk about, mo you re re probably recommend to most of, uh, of your clients that they take it in the morning, mm -hmm. right? Some people say if I take it at night, it gives me a little too much energy and I can't sleep. I can tell you that doesn't happen to me, but I'm also not a great test case because like last night for dinner, I had a cup of coffee, went home, went to sleep. So I don't, I just don't have a problem falling asleep. Most people take it in the morning. What sleep aid have you ever heard of? Like if even melatonin or anything where you take it in the morning and it helps you sleep better at night. Well, and you know, the most popular sleep aids right now is gabapentin, which is insane and ambient and just go look up the side effects yeah. of these drugs for sleep and you know and it's not good for your liver to take Tylenol PM or Motrin PM or whatever oh, yeah. PM those are those are might be okay for like once in a blue moon and you're traveling you have jet lag or something but that is super bad for your liver long term so that that, that, that those should not even be options so have you had any testimonials related to jet lag yes i have like, and i've had people that I mean, they'll buy a full bottle to take on their trip because they don't want it to be open, an open container right. in their thing. And you guys have now the travel size bottles, yeah. which is excellent for travel because yep. people can throw them in their bag or within the ounces of yep. what you can put on to travel. So that's good news. But I have clients that would, before you have the travel size, would buy a full bottle unopened to take and, and to leave Hong it. Kong. Yeah. And well, yeah, leave it or take it and put it in a double Ziploc yeah. baggie yeah. so that they could bring it back because they don't want to be without it. And they were totally adapting to the jet lag like nothing, like yeah. awesome. Yes. But what I was going to say about the new new people, new people, if you're going to take C60, the Vital 60, the ESS 60, mm -hmm. what I really recommend is that you write down on a piece of paper, give yourself a numbering system. What is your energy right now? Like a one meaning a zero idea. is you can't get out of bed. A 10 is you have all the energy all day to do everything you want. Give yourself a number. Is it a two, a three, a four, what is it? And then reevaluate in a month. The other one is what's your sleep like? You know, how many hours of REM sleep do you think you're getting? Either because you're um, not going to bed, you're tossing and turning, you're waking up, you know, stuff like that. But the other thing I would say is, is give your brain a number. You know, what's your brain power? What's your brain focus? Do you feel like you're in a cloud? Do you have like brain fog? Um, a friend of mine said she had CRS, can't remember shit. <laughs> <laughs> she had the, the condition CRS. You know, those things also totally changed for a lot of people on uh, Vital C60. So give yourself a score in these different areas, you know, mental capacity, uh, brain function, sleep, energy, um, mobility, you know, how, how much of a desire you have to exercise. If you have energy, you're going to want to be moving around. You're going to be wanting to get on the treadmill that's been sitting there holding your laundry, right. or you're going to be wanting to get outside and doing something, or just doing stuff. A lot yeah. of people who are tired, you know, tiredness or fatigue and depression 
sometimes look a lot alike. Yeah, yeah. You know, people can't see the difference. So the other thing I've heard, but I really think it had to do with fatigue, is a lot of people are saying that their neuro health is better, which is their mood, their anxiety, their depression, and all that stuff. That doesn't logically make sense. I mean, I didn't see any it documented. It does with better sleep, though. Well, it does with right? better sleep, see, that's and the, also that's does why with that's better my, energy. That's my current theory is mm -hmm. the better sleep, because it really can answer a lot of things. You, you talked about mental health. We had one testimonial, a lady called in and said uh, that her son used to go to, the, and I think I shared this with you, used to go to the hospital with, with uh, mental health episodes four or five times a year, and since being on ESS-60, uh, ha hasn't had to go back to the hospital. So um, so if that's again, goes back to better sleep, that can like you, you get rid of uh, a lack of sleep and depression gets a lot easier and, and energy levels go up. So that's my, that's just my current theory. You know, it's, it is just a theory mm -hmm. and I'm working on kind of testing it. By the way, even if we prove it does help you sleep better, I don't know what the process looks like to prove that that's the piece that helps you feel better in, in all these different regards. Well, that's actually another question. I know about the original rat study and I know that there's some people um, doing some official research on long-term health benefits of C60 on specifically two major areas, but do you know of any other, anything that's been published? I know these other studies are pending. Do you know of any published studies on specific health conditions that's out there? So um, I'm not aware of any published studies, right? I am aware there's a guy who has uh, his pets on raw food. Uh, so he's got, I think it's a couple thousand um, uh, dogs and cats. I think it's, I think it's all dogs. Wow. I haven't had a conversation with him um, in this compound. And he's, he's actually doing really amazing stuff by just giving them raw food, right? The dogs are living longer. They don't have cancer. They don't have tumors. They don't have all of these things. And so I had a conversation with him. So he's interested in incorporating ESS-60 into, into that study. There is a company that has actually patented a, 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 a component that has C60 in it. I don't know if, I'm assuming it's ESS60 you know, in terms of quality and, and different components as part of a cancer treatment regime for pets, right? And so I know that that patent, but I don't, they've got anecdotal information. They don't have a double blind study that they've been doing with that. So I don't, I'm not aware of any studies that are that specific. We're still working and it's a pain, we want to reproduce that original study, right? That's, that's step one in science, have study, publish it. Step two, as a scientist, using the scientific method, recreate that study. So we're working on that. Uh, we've got one organization here, another organization uh, out of, well, the, their, their lab is actually in Hungary, uh, the organization is in Colorado, and we're working to like get the study plan together so we can get a quote on this. By the way, this is a five-year study. This is not going to be inexpensive, but it's something that we believe is worth doing. So, um, and you and I talked about kind of having a rumor, hearing a rumor of some organization in the middle of the country doing something. I do. And I don't want to mention it, but I can't say who it is because I don't want to mess up their your what relationship. Doing. With them, yeah, with them, but yeah. I do know of someone that has been doing a very long study on cardiovascular health, heart disease, and those conditions, um, and more recently they started a cancer study and this is a group of MDs and um, in, a, in a medical facility, a research but practicing medical facility and they've had very good results. I thought they were going to publish the study last year, at the end of last year. I have not seen it come out and heard from them which I had asked them to let me know when the study came out. But it is a study on cardiovascular health and cancer specifically with, uh, I, I think it's, it had been going on well, at least five years, but I even think it was eight to ten years. Yeah, you and said when we first kind of discussed you that you had shared with me that it was prior to 2012 that they started. This right, study. it yeah. was. So that's that's at least seven years. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I hope to hear that soon because that's the big thing people say is, well, the study was on the rats, but what about people? And the thing is, is that someone has to spend the money to do these yep. human health studies and they're not cheap. Well, and and currently there's no intellectual property, meaning there's no way to patent this. So what that one pet company patented is C60 with some other thing. This is how patents work, right? Mm -hmm. You put C60, you add these other components and now it's very proprietary and I'm gonna patent this because it's gonna benefit cancer. That's how you get a patent pushed through. The reality is, is if you just use C60, that's probably where all the benefits coming from. So I can say probably, I, I can't say for sure. So currently, you know, you don't get big pharma interested in 
doing a double blind human trial on this because they can't, like they come out on the generics the next day. It doesn't benefit them financially. It doesn't benefit them financially. So, so this is gonna be something that, that really we're, we're gonna have to push forward. I mean, and that's, that's what we'll end up doing. Now, do you think you guys, I have like two more questions. Do you think you guys will eventually put on your website or publish any of the toxicity or saturation or any well, of those? Yeah, as soon as, as soon as we have any studies, by the way, one thing to share, and I don't, I don't know the exact way. It, it was very easy for that initial video that we did because this, the test was so easy. I did the test so that anybody, you know, like, and gave links to the components, the you know, the syringes and the filters, so anybody could do that themselves. We have looked at the saturation of different products uh, that are on the market, and they're not all good, right? There are some that are really good. There are some that are not good. I don't know. I mean, we could publish that, but I don't know. We're obviously we have a vested interest, and so to publish this is to open us to a lot of ridicule. We'll probably, probably won't go down that path. Um, but you know, we're debating whether we want to send it to a third party, get everybody sent to a third party, and so. But but some of the material. In fact, you can take two products side by side, and you can look at them. Uh, and this kind of goes back to I saw a Facebook post the other day. Somebody bought C60 in olive oil and they showed the syringe of it, or it was in a, in, a, in a glass, and it was just olive oil. Like, it wasn't amber. It didn't have the dark coloration that oh, you would have if you had C60. And that gives everybody a bad name. Yeah, no, and that's, that's the, the concern in the industry. Anyway, you can take two samples of C60 side by side, and you can look at them and have some impression. One of the things to be careful of is when you use a different olive oil, it has a different green hue to it inherently. And so that's gonna affect it, so it's not like, Oh, this one's darker, so it has to have more. But it's a, probably a pretty good indication. Well, I want to because I know what this means, and some people watching this that are trying to get information may not know. But the, the, I want to decipher what Chris just said. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those of you that don't know, SES Research makes the Vital C60, and which is a product that I sell and that I take personally and that I suggest. Um, but they also sell. C60 ESS powder yep, ESS to 60 powder. other companies that make C60 in various oil products. So what I want to clarify is the saturation study might hurt his business <laughs> with the people who are not ethical that may not be stirring it long enough or putting enough powder in there. Yep. Because so it's not that he doesn't want to publish a saturation study, but he, he has a wholesale side of his business and he has a retail side of his business. And the retail side is, is the product that we keep talking about. Yeah. The wholesale side is selling powder to someone else that you guys might be dealing with who might not be using as good of an olive oil. They might be using an inferior oil that has palm oil in it. They yeah. might be not putting as much C60 powder as they should because of the price of the powder. They may not be stirring it long enough because they might be running low on supply and might stir it for three days before it goes out. He cannot control those things. Yeah. He cannot, he has no say so and no control over what other people do. So for him to put, I'm just explaining that it's not a lack of desire right. to put out a saturation it's a study. Ones, for sure. Yeah, it's it's kind of a, a thing because he could be shooting himself in the foot with people that are his customers on the wholesale side. Right. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, okay. well, that's, that's, that's certainly true. Okay. I mean, that, that's part of the concern. Yeah, and so I want to be clear on that because some people may not know that you have not understood yet that you actually sell the ESS powder to yeah. other companies. Yeah, well, we're the largest manufacturer and distributor of carbon uh, of ESS sixty and carbon and carbon sixty. I really believe that they're two different things um, on the planet. And so, so yeah, our customers are buying it, and and if really if you're taking oil. Uh, they're, you know, we're, we're selling 90% of the C60 into the market. Okay, and then I think this last question, I'm gonna look at my notes, but um, there is one guy in particular that I think does have good information, but there's some, there keeps being on different interviews, I've heard all this NASA reference stuff. Uh -huh. And NASA is here too in Houston. Yes. We're all here in Houston, yep. NASA and Rice and 
and you know, yep, and SAS all this, research. And yeah. SAS research. I think and I just me. threw us in that class. <laughs> <laughs> We're all here. And Bryn. Yeah. <laughs> We're so here. why does NASA keep coming up? If you even can think of a reason. Yeah, so you I, have I, not talked about this. I just want yeah. you to answer the question. Yeah, so I think um, at, at one point there was one vendor, and they, and they may still be on the market. I haven't seen the guys again. They were on a YouTube video, and they're like, we're NASA scientists, and, and we know all this. There's another one out there who's like, I'm a carbon scientist, which I don't even know what that is, uh, but we're this. I know what a carbon nanomaterial scientist is, uh, and I have a, a, an indication that a carbon scientist, especially in the defense industry, is going to be somebody who's working on uh, uh, graphite sheets uh, or, or um, graphene sheets that are going on to structures, which is a very macro, a very large scale process, and has nothing to do with nanotechnology, that I know. So these guys are on and they're talking about, about, about them being NASA scientists, and you wonder, like, well, what does it mean to be a NASA scientist? So my company, we've actually done different engineering projects, and I've actually done an engineering project on NASA, like, and for scientists. So are we NASA scientists? It's just not. It's not something, in, and what is a NASA scientist, what value does a NASA scientist bring to uh, carbon nanotechnology and a, a biomedical field, right? Well, that's what I'm wondering is, is there, because you and I talked about this separately, this wasn't on the last video, but, you know, the implication is, you know, maybe it's used with astronauts, or right. maybe it's, you know, NASA endorses it, right? But or maybe we're just really, really smart because we're a NASA scientist, right? Right. So, at, as far as you know, does NASA have any affiliation with the human consumption. aspect or consumption of ESS? As, as far as I know, no. Like th that is, and there was even rumor that NASA had bought like the largest mm -hmm. producer. That is us. And <laughs> they, didn't they, never, they, never, they didn't buy us. I can assure you, <laughs> they didn't approach us, right? So, uh, so yeah. So it, it's interesting how these kind of rumors go around, and, uh, and you know, you have to be careful. There's the information, and in, especially in like YouTube chats and Facebook forums, and you know, there's some people who are actually, uh, you know, manufacturers or distributors of products who are in there acting as other people and and speaking up, you know, uh, playing up their product when it may or may not have, you know, ESS-60, which I would say is a product that's, you know, safe to put in your body, or C60 even in general, right, whether it's safe or not. So maybe it was just a sound official. I think that's what it was. I think, I think that it was related to, we're NASA scientists, ooh, that's a lot of credibility, but I can promise you that there are NASA scientists who are off the charts geniuses and that there are NASA scientists who are good and talented, but you know, like just being that, you know, I'm a scientist should carry probably the same weight until you see more of their accolades. Or in fact, like let's use your own ability to discern what kind of credibility you should give them. See how they are on the video, see how they speak. Like are those people who are clearly super genius NASA scientists that I should respect, or do they just fit into kind of natural scientific society? Well, and from those same kind of videos, this brings up the last part of that question is some of them have opinions on how to store um, the, the product, right? the product yeah. and if it should be in dark, if it should be how long it lasts, if it should be refrigerated. I don't refrigerate mine. Yeah. Um, do you, can you just answer that officially? Because it, yeah. you know, it doesn't have to be stored in dark. Does it, how long will it last? When someone buys a bottle, what's the shelf life? So we get calls, especially when it gets hot in the summer, like you're gonna ship it to me, it's gonna be three days, because we ship really quickly, it's gonna be three days in the sun. Um, you know, is that a concern? You know, or at least three days, not necessarily in the sun, but three days in, in a box, in a, in a hot truck on, on the way. And the reality is, and the simplest way to think of this is, what do you do with your olive oil? Do you store your olive oil in a glass container? Because sometimes it's nice to have it in a glass container, but do you store that in your windowsill? No, it's not a good idea. Your olive oil can go bad when you store it in that situation. Do you store it in your pantry that doesn't necessarily have refrigeration, it's not hotter, it's just, you know, it's a little different than room temperature, but it's certainly in the ballpark of room temperature. That's how you should treat the product because it is—it's mostly olive oil. You you actually can't get that much ESS60 to dissolve in olive oil, so you're mostly dealing with olive oil. In the winter, we get another question, which is if it's delivered and it's really cold, uh, olive oil will coagulate. Mm -hmm. 
as soon as you bring it back up to room temperature, it just perfectly mixes and, it, and it's fine. And so no C60 is falling out of solution. You know, n there's no concerns. Just bring it back to room temperature. Okay, so if it was left in a, in a cabinet, if someone buys three bottles or six bottles, it's going to yep. be fine. Tip, typical lifespan for olive oil is three years. Um, it's theorized, especially in, in that original study, that original Bati study, they said that they had kept some of the product around for the five-year length of that study and that it didn't go rancid, right? And so you're looking at maybe, maybe the ESS-60 adds value to the olive oil and so it doesn't degrade. In any case, we put a one-year best buy date on it just to make sure. And really, you, you shouldn't, you know, you don't need to buy more than a year supply and just consume it faster than a year. Okay. And more than two drops a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for best results. Um, and we talked about this having to do with the new ESS 60 um, terminology and to distinguish you, you guys and your product from everything else. And you said something that I think of all the time because I still, I mean, I think of everybody should know about C60 now, right? right. I mean, yep. everybody in the world should know about it. It's been all over, well, some channels of YouTube, some people promoting it on YouTube more than others, but some pretty well-known people that have did talked interviews about it, yeah. and talked about it. How, I mean, I know that a lot of people don't know about it because it's just my clients that know about it because right. I've talked about it in newsletters and things. Do you have any idea is it one like, percent or less of the population uh, that might know about? It's way less. It's way less than one percent. Okay. Right. So if you look at the current market for um, for C60 in oil or ESS60 in oil, is probably somewhere between twelve and fifteen million total. Um, you look at what CBD is. So there's not a person that you talk to that hasn't heard of CBD, right? Wow. Well, but almost not a person, yeah. right? And there's probably four people, and, and, and our circles are different, right? So you're in the circle that people are probably more aware of this anyway. It's kind of a biohacking. I'm mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to take care of my health naturally, mm -hmm. as naturally as possible. So those people are more inclined to know that. If you look at the general population, and that's a small percentage of the population, and generally look at the population, like, so I think we're less than, way less than 1% of the population even knows what C60 or ESS60 is. So there's a huge, potential yeah there, it needs it will grow immensely like that's that is what's going to happen over the next five to ten years so i don't know why anyone wouldn't buy the product from you direct or from me yeah, well, <laughs> but, from you. yeah. But, but let's just say um i know this is a change right now yeah. happening to really set you guys apart because of what else is going on in the market yes. out there how the concerns well, that we have for the market, yes. Yeah, so will your new labeling, or will you have some way to say ESS-60 yes. to distinguish, and, and, and will people that buy your ESS-60 powder, do you think they'll distinguish it also? Do you know yet? So we, we hope that they will, right? Because what we're hoping to create is an environment where you can have confidence in the product that you're buying, right? And the big confidence is, is it solvent free? That's the biggest component. Is it the right grade that was used in the original rat study? And so by doing ESS-60, yeah, we'll authorize people to use ESS-60 as long as they're buying ESS-60 from us. If they're buying a lesser grade and we see their ESS-60 labeling on it, we will, we will ask them to remove it because that's not, that's not the intent, that's not, uh, that's not good for the consumer. It's not good for the industry, right? right it's not good for the industry. Here, here's the, the, the reason we really did that initial video together is this guy is saying he has C60 in his product. We don't even know that it's not even, it's not C60, it's definitely not ESS60. And, and if something happens to someone based on what he's putting in this product, that can ruin the whole, like all of a sudden the FDA comes in and says, nobody can sell any of this until we figure it out. And with the confusion nature of what he's putting out there, that could take years for, for the FDA to figure out even what's going on. And so that's why in that particular case, we, we wanted to just call, call you know, say what's in the product and what isn't, right? It's, it's, it's really, really bad for the industry and bad for people who are getting all these benefits from, uh, from ESS-60. And how long do you think that that'll be the new term, ESS-60? Like from your product perspective or people that use your ESS-60 powder, yeah. like for people to know this is what to look for. So um, you got to think in terms of companies that have invested in their existing labeling. 
Um, even us, we're going to get rid of these boxes. We're going to get rid of the labeling that we have, and the next boxes and the next labeling are going to say ESS 60 on them. Um, you can always call us, and we will answer the question. Uh, and I gotta say, most of the time, we do have confidentiality agreements with some of the some of the people who buy product from us. Um, and if at some point they want to put ESS 60 on it, great. That'll kind of no more confidentiality. Then you know, the people will know where they buy it from. But if you want to call us and ask us, we can usually tell you yes, they buy from us, or no, they don't buy from us. And yes, they buy the right product. In reality, we have uh, so uh, one of our goals is to try and keep the one gram price as low as possible. The product is is expensive, right? And for those people who can't afford it, there is some cost savings available if you buy one gram and you make it yourself. It's a long process. Turns out you should mix it even more than two weeks. Um, but if, if, it's, if it's a financial situation like that, then we want to try and make it available. And that's why we have the one grams available. When somebody buys a one gram that is not an ESS 60 product, right, that is not safe for human consumption, we will call them and ask them what they're doing with it. Okay. And if they're going to put it in oil to sell it to somebody, to give it to somebody, or to take it themselves, we will advise, we will cancel that order, advise them what they should order, and get the right product to them. That's just company policy. That's been company policy for more than a year now. Well, that's the right thing to do. Yes. Because yes. someone could just be making an honest mistake yep. and ordering the wrong, the wrong thing when they don't know better. I can tell you, I had a conversation. A guy called in the office. I answered the call. It's like, yes, I was thinking of this grade. I'm like, no, you shouldn't buy this grade. You have to buy this grade. This is the one that's been, you know, that there are no solvents in. I happened to see his order, and he ordered the wrong stuff after having a conversation with me. So I immediately called him back. I'm like, hey, you ordered the wrong stuff. Oh, I got confused. Like, that happens all the time. So, yeah, that's why we reach out to people and make sure that they're buying the right stuff. Yeah, I did talk to a few people that make their own, and I was like, oh, my God, I would never even attempt this. You know, but... Number one, because I don't want to, <laughs> I don't do something wrong that I'm going to be taking. Yeah. I want to take something, but I, I know everybody's situation is different. But I'm not trying to play chemist at home. Yeah. I have no desire yeah. to play chemist. Well, and you, if you throw this now, really, we're mixing for three weeks, just because it's so hard to get C60. We really should be putting C60 ESS60 into the oil. You need to mix it aggressively for that long, and so that's you know. That, that's extended what was a production time of two weeks, which is a long time for like, most things don't take two weeks to make, mm -hmm. let alone six weeks from the, you know, the start of the mm -hmm. carbon rods. Um, and, and now, really, we believe that should be three weeks. Okay, well, I'm sure this will raise $20,000. <laughs> I tried to think of everything I could that people have thrown at me, but somehow, yeah. as soon as this releases, there'll be another million comments yep. and questions, and that's fine. <laughs> Hopefully, Chris will jump on every once in a while and set everybody straight and answer yes. the questions, yep. because it is an important topic, and it is important, and I, I say this about all health supplements and products, you have to know what you're putting in your body, and food, and yes. everything, you know, that you can't, it's just not a good idea to be ignorant about it. And this video is a little more technical than yeah. the other ones, but I think it's important because yep. people come up with these technical research-based questions. Yep. And, and firing minds want to know. They do, they do. So I appreciate it, Chris. Thank well, you Well, and much. good. And you're going to put a link below, and that's your affiliate link. We're very happy to be working with you. Thank you for putting this video together. So you get a commission off of that. So make sure that you use her link when you when you watch this video and, and, and go purchase. So Thank you. And the yeah. link will be below the video. And um, anyway, thanks for watching. We know this is long, but thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Thanks. Turn yeah, you know how to. All right, uh, I got um, uh, so.